hello friends welcome to java swing tutorial in the next few tutorial we are going to look about jlist first we will see how to create a simple jlist so in this video we will use jlist control or component and we will explore it so here in the screenshot you are seeing a list control with one item in the list got selected which is mango then towards the right of the list control you can see a label control that it displays the selected list item so in this video we will look at jlist list selection listener and we will also talk about get selected value okay let's start So this uh, very first video in this series is mandatory that tells how we create a JFrame window. So if you know how to create a JFrame window, you can skip the video and uh, you can directly proceed to the next part of this video. So JList is the component. So to use the JList here, we are talking about creating a simple JList. So we will create the JList using the constructor. And to the constructor, we will pass this array of items this means we will create an array of string if you see here this string array is having 60 items in it then when we are constructing the list we will supply this array list so a swing when it is rendering this list control it shows all 60 elements in that list control so if you see here in this example 60 items uh, 60 items sometimes it will not be possible to show all the item in the uh, container uh, here we are going to create a jframe so it's not possible to show all these 60 items in the uh, uh, list control that is accommodated inside the jframe so what we will do first we will say what is the visible row count? First, we will mark visible row count. Say, for example, if a visible row count is a 3, we can mark it here. Then, remaining item can be seen through a scroll control. So, to mark this visible, we will make a call to and we will pass an integer here so if you want to show only three then you will set that with a three next since we need a scrolling we will create a j scroll pan and we will hand over this uh, J list to the J scroll pan. Finally, we will add the J scroll pan to the content pan. Here in our example, this content pan is J frame, so content pan. That's all. So now uh, your frame window can render the uh, list item with these uh, strings. So J list item. So J list item will raise an event called list selection event. So we can implement a list selection listener and override. And this value changed override will receive this list selection event. So here is the sequence we will create our example. 
first we will prepare array of string then we will construct the j list by supplying this array of string after that we will create a j scroll pan and we will supply this uh, uh, j list which is a link to the array of string then we will give that to the content fan so this is enough to display the j list but to handle the event what we will do we will uh, override the list selection listener for this j list then we will make our code change or we will handle this value changed event so this is the sequence we are going to demo the um, eclipse uh, demo so before going to eclipse demo you can refer the video description and you can uh, open the code snippet in the google drive if you want you can copy paste the code or you can start typing the code now let's go to the eclipse uh, demo okay let me open the eclipse oxygen So here is our uh, a project swing example. And we resized this uh, with uh, set bounds. And if you see the frame window displays uh, like this. Now open the Google Drive, which is mentioned in the description of the video. So the first code snippet is creating a J label so it's a class level variable so this label is required to handle the um, list selection event so we will implement list selection listeners value changed method and in that method we will report what a list item is selected by the user and to report that we need this j label so we are creating that as a class level uh, variable so this class level reference will hold the instance of jlabel next if you see we are creating the array so for copy paste you can use control c and control v and if you see here we are creating a uh, string array with eight items in it so all the items represents fruit names so now you have a picture of what uh, list item will contain here i mean the what the j list will contain here so it will contain list of these fruits so it holds eight fruits so array is ready next we need to construct the j list so in snippet 4 if you see we are importing jlist from javax.swing then we are calling set visible row count to 4 so what this means even though the list will hold eight items we want to show only four item so remaining four item will be available to the user through scrolling capability 
but uh, scrolling is not yet accommodated here so to provide scrolling for this J list we need to hand over this J list to J scroll panel so we will do that next Next, we construct a J scroll pen from Java X dot swing package, and you can see we are handing over this uh, list of fruits to it. After creating the J scroll pen for this uh, fruit list, that means the J list, then we are then we are adding this j list as well as a label to the control host and control host we retrieved from j frame by making call to get content pen okay at this stage we can run once So this is how our uh, list control uh, displays. To select an item, you can click on it and you can see how the background changes. Now, if I select some other fruit name here, the previously selected one uh, get unselected and new one will get selected. So let me click on grapes and you can see that. So since we ask reset visible row count as four, only four item is shown here even though the the list supports eight item to, so to see the remaining items user can click on the scroll box so the scroll bar is supported through the scroll pen now we will uh, handle the event from this j list our goal is to report what item is selected by the user so we are adding the list selection listener So once I press control space, it shows list selection listener as anonymous inner type. Once you double click it, you will automatically get the handler for it. So this is where we have to write our handler. So in the handler, if you see, we are using our we are using our JList instance list fruits. Then we are making call to get selected value. So the get selected value method will return a string, and we are storing that inside a string variable selected fruit then we make use of our uh, list control i mean label control then we make a call to set text to show the selected list item now it's time to execute this so since the layout is uh, flow layout the label will be displayed here beside this uh, list control and you can see the we handled the event mango now let me go ahead and select cherry the cherry will get displayed here
So if you see here, um, we are done with our demo and we created array of string. We created eight fruits and we stored that in a string. Then we created J list and we passed the testing array to the J list. This also we done. Then in our example, we kept set visible row count as four. So that's how the list initially showed four items. So then we created a J scroll pan and we handed over our J list of eight fruits to the J scroll pan to provide scrolling support. After that, we added the J scroll pan to the content pan. What happens if I add J scroll pan to content pan? Uh, the content pan of the JFrame window knows uh, it needs to render J scroll pan. So when it tries to render J scroll pan, it knows that J scroll pan is uh, handling the J list. So it will render the J list, and it knows the J list contains. Uh, when it is rendering the JList, it knows that JList is nothing but an array of eight fruit strings. So it renders those fruit strings. Since the initial row count or visible row count is four, it shows only four, and remaining four items will be available through the JScroll pen. All right, so. After handing over the JList to Content Pan, we handled the uh, list selection listener. We used the anonymous inner class, and Eclipse IDE automatically provided the value changed. And in the value changed, we may make use of JList function to know what is the list item selected by the user. That's all here in this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.